And now we're obviously here for the fight that took place in the uh, early hours of this morning. And this was a, it wasn't a, a grudge match because Rory Jones had been so dismissive of Clinton Woods' uh, of, of chances of actually winning this that in, in a way you'd have thought it was one of the great mismatches of all time. Anyway, this is how the two guys viewed the fight beforehand. His weakness is, uh, is an underestimation. He underestimates me, and that's what I think his weakness is going to be. He thinks he's going to be going out to play basketball with me, and he's not. He's going to be in a, he's going to be in a war. When they bring me an engine, I don't care what kind of engine it is. I'm going to tear it down. Understand? I don't care if it's a Volvo, a Hugo, a Mercedes, a Bentley, a Hummer. I don't care what it is. Bring me the engine, and I would dismantle it. That's my job. So I don't sit that car and say, no, I only do Volvos, or I only do this, or I only do No. I tear them all down. I don't care what you bring me. Just bring it to the shop. Right there. That's my shop. That's where I work at. 24-7. Uh, in the time. And I handle it. <laughs> well, considering that metaphor, in advance, Roy Jones had said Clinton Woods was basically just a larder who wasn't going to last a second, and there was a complete nobody. Let's see what happened. Richie watched this alongside Jim Neely. <laughs> An entrance of truly Hollywood proportions as World Championship Boxing returns to Portland and Oregon after a gap of the best part of 40 years. And the focus of attention, needless to say, here in the Rose Garden is the man who was the world middleweight champion, then the world super middleweight champion, and now the undisputed world light heavyweight champion. And I suspect without a single shadow of a doubt, pound for pound, the best boxer in the world at the moment. And this is the man, well, who Clinton Woods is going to try to challenge. What a formidable task. Roy Jones Jr. from Pensacola in Florida. It might have been a shorter trip to uh, come to Sheffield. But if my geography serves me right, it's a long, long way from Florida here to Oregon. Gentlemen, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Jordan Brand, a division of Nike, are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed light heavyweight championship of the world. Working in association with the Dennis Hobson Promotions and sanctioned by the Oregon State Police Boxing Commission. Executive Director, Mr. Jim Cassidy. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system will be Gus Mercurio, Omar Mintoon, and Jack Woodburn. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jay Nady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with dedication to the victims and heroes of 9-11-2001 for the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with red and blue, and officially weighing in at 174 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one, consisting of 32 victories, including 19 knockouts, with only one defeat. Tonight, he comes to the ring ready to shock the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from the steel city of the UK, he's the pride of Sheffield, England, the former WBC international champion, former European champion, and two-time British Commonwealth
boxing history as a man to have defeated every opponent he has ever faced. And he is the consensus pound for pound best boxer in the world of the past decade. From Pensacola, Florida, the four-time world champion, former middleweight, former super middleweight, and the two-time reigning, defending, undefeated light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Well, Michael Buffer, who's made ring announcing something of a, an art form, right at the top of his form tonight here in the Rose Garden in Portland in Oregon. Final instructions now from the uh, referee for this evening's, well, main contest without a shadow of a doubt, Jane Aidy. That the ring is a little bit uneven here. So you might want to rock around here. Also, I want to take a minute to clean up all this mess that came down out of the ceiling. So I want to send you back to your corner. Do you have any questions? Go ahead, button the hip bone. Good luck. A little bit of debris going to be cleared from the ring. Enthusiastic Roy Jones fans who gave him uh, something akin to a, a ticker tape welcome. But I'm sure he's got a very special welcome for the challenger from Sheffield, Clinton Woods. In for, well, Woods, what's without a doubt, the hardest contest of his professional career so far. So what a step up this is going to be for the former European, British and Commonwealth champion. The number one contender for all this man's titles. Woods at this stage looking nice and relaxed, but deep down he must know that this really is a massive, massive challenge. The ring has been cleared. Jane 80 seems to be happy. The crowd settling into their seats for what promises to be one of the great challenges by a British boxer in the modern era. Nice little touch of gloves and Clinton Woods, the taller of the two, in white. I'm not quite sure what he's got on his back at this stage against... Uh, Roy Jones, and I suppose Richie Woodall, the last British boxer to have uh, met Roy Jones. The question everybody will want to ask, what Roy Jones are we going to see here this evening? Well, that's the interesting question, is it? Are we going to see a Roy Jones that's going to really sparkle and wants to put on a show? Or are we going to see uh, a Roy Jones which in the past he has looked somewhat bored with his opposition and he's, he's got a little bit complacent in certain fights? It'll be interesting, but early on, Clinton will, will, will just have to watch out for that hand speed. That's his biggest problem here. He's got to match Jones for the hand speed. Left hand from Jones, a little bit on the low side, just right on the waistline of the challenger uh, from Sheffield. Now, 30 years old, Clinton Woods. Three years younger than Roy Jones Jr., whom we first saw in action and splendid action it was away back in the 1988 Olympic Games. When having beaten Richie Woodall in the semi-final, he was absolutely robbed in the final against the Korean. And then they had the temerity, the boxing officials in Seoul, to give him the Val Barker trophy for the best boxer. Well, he's picked up many trophies since then, and they reckon he is the best boxer, point for point, that we've seen for uh, many a long decade. Fast hands by Jones. And for quite a short man at, at light heavy, he's got extraordinarily long arms, and that's one of his great trademarks. Yes, yeah, certainly. That's what I remember boxing against him most of all, actually. When I thought I was out of range, there was that fast jab, and uh, that's what Clinton has got to put up with tonight these very fast jabs from Jones and then there's the hooks and he brings the right hand across but the hooks seem to be thrown out of the line of vision and they hone in on the target and he is an awesome boxer there's no doubt about it it's very important that Clinton gets behind that jab early on here Couple, double those jabs up the, the single jab isn't enough you must push Jones on his back foot with that double jab if he can Woods coming forward covering up very nicely Jones has this habit of switching from uh, orthodox to southpaw and back again with that consummate ease good little exchange Woods being quite rightly wary Woods certainly known much more as a boxer than a puncher and it's going to take a puncher probably to beat Roy Jones so oh great shot by Jones fast fast right hand a little faint with the left and once again the lovely combination by Jones and I think, alas, for Clinton Woods, I think we're going to see the, the Roy Jones at the top of his form here tonight, Richie. Well, certainly Jones is fine, fighting at the pace that he wants to fight at. There's a lot of single shots going in from Jones. This is better for Woods. Now he's got to keep on. He's got to keep on to Jones. Keep him on the back foot. But, um, as I said, he's working his pace, and those single shots, they're so fast. But Clinton has got to be quicker with the feet, Jimmy. He must be a lot quicker with those feet and push Jones back. 
Just about 10 seconds to go to the end of the first. Woods will be reasonably pleased with this, although he got himself caught a couple of times. Good long look, and there's a nice little gesture. And uh, Woods seems reasonably happy with that. Jones makes the short trip back to his corner. Now, 33 years old. All right. Beaten uh, just about everything. is the uh, main trainer, Alton Murkison, who's been with him for so many years now. Been boxing professionally since May 1989 just six or seven months after he boxed in the uh, Seoul Olympic Games. Clinton Woods, Dennis Hobson, and uh, Ian Olcock in the corner. Neil Port there as well. Be reasonably happy with that opening round, but the worst signs that Jones's hand speed is going to be a very, very decisive uh, factor. Bit of look at that. Woods just dropped that uh, right hand of his, and Jones clipped him round the ear as if to say, if you're going to leave yourself open, I'm going to expose that vulnerability. A bit of a swelling underneath the uh, left eye of Clinton Woods. Round two, the schedule, remember, for 12 three-minute rounds for the undisputed light heavyweight championship of the world. Clinton Woods, the official challenger, the official WBC challenger. Jones holds just about every belt that's worth having, apart from the WBO, which is held by the uh, useful German Darius Mikulczewski. And Jones, interesting, interestingly, was quoted a few days ago as saying that he wouldn't go to Germany unless he got 25 million pounds sterling. Good work by Clinton Woods. Good uh, stiff jabbing by him. A little bit better by Woods. And, and uh, also, Jim, he must start moving that head. That first round, his head was just too static for me. Clinton Woods, he's come out this round and he's, he's starting to move the head a little bit more, which will make it a little bit more awkward for Jones. Clinton's got to move that head and get behind that jab. Well, looking down at the list of men that uh, Roy Jones has beaten is enough to make any normal human being quake in their boots. He's defeated men like Bernard Hopkins, Vinny Pazienza, Eric Luca of Canada, Mike McCallum, that great Jamaican known as the, the body snatcher. Again, good little bit of pressure there from Woods, keeping Jones on the ropes, working from body head. That was good. This is good stuff from Woods. Harrison, Jones, this is much better from him. Got to get him back on those ropes. Look at Jones, great concentration in those eyes, looking for any slight weakness in uh, Clinton Woods' approaches. Jones, shorter, and he, he boxes out of a crouch, but those long arms of his can uh, snake out from all sorts of angles and cause you all sorts of troubles. Good anticipation by Woods. Jones once again fainting. Uh, Woods absorbing those shots on the forearms. Right hand from Jones really was delivered with fairly serious intent. Woods moving out of the way nicely. Not a bad round for Clinton Woods. Jones perhaps having the edge into yeah. the last minute. Jones just waiting, probably three or four seconds at a time. He's waiting for Woods to lead. He wants to work off uh, Woods' mistakes and off his leads. But Jones, terrific style. And uh, as I said, the hand speed is just phenomenal. It really is. But he wants Clinton to lead. That's why it's Clinton. When he does lead, he must... Uh, double up the attacks, double those jabs, and try and get Jones on, on the ropes. Well, Jones has uh, been making some utterings in the recent weeks about moving up to heavyweight and challenging John Ruiz. I really don't know how he's going to do that, because he would need to put on the best part of that two stones, and that certainly would slow him down. And he's not big enough to be a heavyweight, but at light heavyweight, he has very few peers. In fact, he has no peers at all. Good work by Woods at the end. Solid left by the Englishman into the ribs of the American champion. Yeah, much better work from Woods, but just lost the initiative there, Jim C. He just allowed Roy Jones back to the centre of the ring, and, and that's, that's where he likes to be most of all. What a terrific shot. right hand. Great right hand right at the end by Jones, just to remind Clinton Woods who is the boss. But Woods has done pretty well in the opening couple of rounds. Jones may well have just to edge them, but they'll be reasonably happy with uh, Clinton Woods. Ian Orcott going to work straight away on a bit of swelling underneath the right eye. Absolutely packed house here in Portland and Oregon, not uh, a venue that you would normally associate with uh, World Championship Boxing. Las Vegas has become obviously the home of World Championship Boxing in recent years, and it would have been absolutely wonderful had we got Roy Jones over to box Clinton Woods in Sheffield. There's that chopping right hand at the end, and well, Jones delivered it, and then look how quickly he moved out of the way of any uh, counter-attack that Clinton Woods might have posed. Little feint there, whoop that straight in. Terrific shot by Jones right at the end of the round, and Woods looks at him.
Jane 80 brings them together for the start of this third run. Jones moving with it. Plenty of confidence. See, that's where Woods doesn't want to be there. Just, just standing in front of Jones, just allowing Jones to work at his own pace. Clinton has got to start pushing the guy back and being faster with the feet. I know it's easier, easier said here, what, being sit here, Jim, but uh, that's what he's got to do. If he's going to have any success against this guy, he must push him on the back foot and get him back on the ropes. He doesn't want to be in the centre of the ring there. Good variation once again by Jones. Solid looking right come in from Clinton Woods, but he had to take a left uh, just before that by a split second. Again, Jones with the faster hands. One of Woods' problems is that he hasn't really been all that desperately active. It was a year ago since he uh, bruised out a tough win against Yoey Davis, the Italian-based Ugandan, in a final eliminator for this title. But in March, in Bethnal Green, his only contest since uh, the fairly straightforward three-round stoppage of the unheralded Clint Johnson. And that maybe was not the proper preparation for Roy Jones. Yeah, Woods is really struggling here with, with handling the speed of Jones. Jones, um, his, his, his speed is just really unbelievable, and uh, Clinton is having a lot of problems handling it and coping with that speed. Good covering up by Jones. One right hand by Woods wasn't far away. Look at those little cheeky uppercuts coming in from the champion. Used the ropes very nicely. Covers up well. Uppercuts, good work by Woods. Left and right from the challenger, not too far from the mark. Yes, yeah. much better work from Woods. And now he's got to keep him there, Jimmy. He must keep him there and keep working away. Body and head, throwing those hooks. Big hooks here. Good work by Clinton Woods. Jones at this stage content just to stay on the ropes and try to fend off some of the uh, attacks from the boxer from Sheffield. And now they break. A minute to go to the end of the third. Good little spell. Uh, what a right hand. Look at Jones produces it from nowhere at all terrific solid right hand caught Woods flush Woods of course only that one blemish in his record beaten by David Starry in March of 98 and a Commonwealth title defence but since then he's gone on to win every single contest but this is a tough one for him Jones looking very composed yeah Jones setting the traps here He's, uh, he's way ahead on points now, and uh, Clinton will know that, and psychologically, he knows he's got to go forward, try and force the pace. And as he goes forward, he's falling into the trap, he's falling short, and Jones is countering him. Very clever fighter indeed, Will Jones. Well, he's starting to showboat a little bit. He's letting that uh, left shoulder go down, and the left arm is dangling, but the right still snakes out with really venomous intent. Well, I am the man, I think he's saying to himself, and I think they all know that he is here in Portland, in Oregon. They're getting you waiting, that's why. You don't like it in clothes. Come on, breathe up. No, no, no Come on, no come on. Push out, push out. Push. That's not a bad summation, actually. Uh, they've been telling uh, Clinton Woods that he is waiting and Jones doesn't like it in close. And Woods has got to force the pace. But against someone like Jones, Richie, the danger is, is that you're going to get caught on the counter. Yes, definitely. I mean, the tactics are right, right there, what he's saying, that he is waiting too long. He's definitely waiting too long. And he's got to get behind that long, straight jab a little bit more. Jones on the ropes. Doing well enough. Look at that uppercut. That was nicely delivered. And see how quickly he got that right hand up. And then, whack, look at that. That wasn't too uh, far from being a low blow. And uh, Clinton Woods really grimaced. That was really right on the waistline. And uh, Jay Nady might have said something to Jones about that. Yeah, that, that was a terrific left hook to the body. It was borderline. Some, some referees may give it low, but uh, certainly not on American soil. But Jones, he's moving up the gears here now. He, he's probably sensing that Clinton's just tiring a little bit and he's weakened by these shots. Well, still very much in the uh, early stages. Jones on the flats of his feet now. And uh, Woods not moving the way he should be. In the corner, I've told him he's got to step in a little bit. Oh, wonderful left from Jones. Oh, terrific hand speed from the champion. Good little jab from Clinton Woods, though, on reply. Jones starting to up the pace. Obviously fancies this now. The hands are held much slower than they were in the opening couple of rounds. Yeah, he's literally waiting there for Clinton to lead, and he knows those leads are getting slower and slower, and there's a counter right on there. Terrific speed, and uh, he's just waiting for Clinton to make the mistakes, and he's, he's punishing him here. 
Good solid work by Jones uh, inside. And in many ways, a lot of the way that he goes about his work is a reminiscent of the great Marvin Hagler. There's no nonsense about him. Every, every shot is picked very carefully. Yeah, excellent, excellent. I mean, Hagler was a king himself, but uh, Roy Jones, truly fantastic. Oh, look at that. Two shots to the body and then one to the head from Jones. And he's really just about uh, producing every single shot in his repertoire at this stage. And alas for Clinton Woods, he's on the receiving end. Well, a wee bit of showboating by Clinton Woods. And Jones, I think, can match him for that. But that certainly has brought a big cheer from the American crowd who, who like a bit of that carry-on, don't they? Yes, certainly. But, but Jones, again, so professional, doesn't go wading in there and Clinton there being a bit cocky, which is good because you... Obviously, you've got to test Jones out uh, mentally as well, but, but Jones didn't respond by just waving in there and making mistakes himself, just kept his cool. Less than a minute to go to the end of the fourth. Once again, the Jones uppercut gets through the defence of the challenger, Clinton Woods. So Clinton's feet are far, far too slow, but he really has taken a lot of big shots and they will have drained the, the strength from Clinton Woods. Look at that, Jones then once again dropping that left shoulder and then whacking in that right hand, fooling Clinton Woods. Now Jones is trying to do a bit of showboating and Woods says, come on, I don't think he needs to ask twice. Well, Jones really uh, starting to taunt his man a little bit, in and out very quickly. This is the best run for Roy Jones so far. Not too much between them in the first two, but Jones starting to ease away. And Woods' face is now bearing testament to a lot of very hard shots. And Jones looking supremely confident. And this is 23rd world title contest. What a record. He's lost just one. And that was on a disqualification. And he avenged that. Well, a feral bit of damage now around the eyes of the challenger from Sheffield Clinton Woods. Well, use your jab. That's get your jab to get in. All right, double the jab up, move the feet. Yeah? That's why you're not using your jab. Yeah? Yeah, the jab will get in. Nasty little cut there, but nothing to worry about. Right, nice and calm in the Jones corner. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Good call. Don't change nothing. Don't change nothing. I'm not sure who Jones was uh, glancing at. They've uh, done a decent job on that nasty little nick. It's certainly not contest threatening at this stage. But the Jones corner telling their man not to change anything. Once again, a very nice gentlemanly touch of gloves for this undisputed light heavyweight championship of the world. Jones being the quicker to the punch straight away. Yeah, that whipping left hook, it really is probably the fastest left hook in the business, especially at light heavy. There's no one got a left hook like that. So, so quick. And uh, the only thing that has disappointed me about Clinton tonight is he's conceded his height and reach. You know, he, he has got raw height to reach advantage, but uh, it literally has had no effect here tonight. And that's just the way Jones has fought and how he's drawn him into, into a fight. Jones once again dropping that uh, left shoulder, trying to lure Clinton Woods forward so he can produce the right hand. Good solid body shot by... Clinton Woods, but Jones is in such great condition. This is an extraordinary man. He uh, defended one world title, having played a, a full game of basketball the night before. Nobody else in the world, I think, would ever dream of doing that. Yeah, and again, good work there for Woods on the ropes, but he's conceded. He's, he's let Roy Jones dictate and command from the centre of the ring again, and he should have really tried to keep him on those ropes. Woods touches the ropes. The referee... Uh, didn't say anything to him about that. Midway through this fifth round. Oh, there's that left from Jones again. He, uh, instead of delivering the right, he really fooled Woods. Woods moved away, anticipating the right hand, and Jones caught him with the left. What a cracking shot that was. And again, and Woods is getting it tough right from the champion. Woods again holds onto the ropes and waves his hand, but I think that's a sign of bravado, Richie. He really got hurt there. Yeah, big, big punches here from Jones. And, and that left hook, what he's doing, he's actually... Um, fainting with the jab and that's bringing Clinton's right hand down and then he's whipping it around around the guard and terrific shot 
Jones producing all the shots now, right to the body, trying to draw down the guard of the challenger from Sheffield, Clinton Woods. Better work by Woods, just fending off those blows. He needs to do a bit more now, Woods. Jones is threatening to take over this contest. Yeah, Woods has got to up the work rate. Here. He's just got to be trying to be a bit more positive and throw a few more shots. He's just standing there. He's literally a sitting duck in front of Jones. Now, Jones is literally playing with him at this stage, and, and Clinton has got to change his tactics. Here. He's got to do something totally different and try and push this fella back. A little smile on the face of Roy Jones, the champion. Put the hand down towards his uh, tassel boots. I'm not sure what that was all about. And then delivered a wicked-looking uh, uppercut. And Jones now starting to enjoy this. Woods has not really been able to ruffle his feathers since the opening couple of rounds. Look at Jones. Now, this is a master class in boxing. Looking a little bit... I don't like to see that. I've got to say that uh, turning around a little bit. But this man can do just about everything and says, well done to Clinton Woods. And it's a rather weary Clinton Woods goes back to his corner. And uh, Jones looks as if he's hardly broken sweat at this stage. Well, that was a tough, tough round for uh, Clinton Woods. One more round to take us up to the halfway stage. What's the Jones corner saying? All right, everything looking good, baby. I don't want you to change nothing. Just keep doing what you're doing, okay? If it ain't broke, we ain't gonna fix it. You're hitting this guy clean, he's slowing down. You got him covered up a lot now. Well, a little bit of action from that round. The uh, respective advice from the corners to the Jones corner. Just keep what you're doing to uh, the Woods from the Woods corner. Forget about boxing. You've got to take it to him. Not quite sure what Jones was up to there. Clinton Woods looking a little bit beleaguered. But he survived five pretty tired runs, especially three, four, and five. Once again, the first shot comes in from the defending champion, Roy Jones Jr., the man from Pensacola, Florida. He wasn't going to be persuaded to come to Sheffield. How different it might have been in the uh, Steel City, well, we will never know. Terrific shot once again by Woods. That, that left hand, or Jones, I should say, that left hand going in. Yeah, some great shots again from Jones, and you've really got to ask yourself how... how much longer can Clinton Woods take this kind of pressure? Some terrific shots from Jones. Body and head. He really has got the full repertoire of punches. His hooks, his, his, his straight punches, his uppercuts. I mean, look at that. Excellent. Yeah, terrific left just to finish off a very good sequence now. And uh, Jones is not clowning now. There's a serious uh, intent in, in the work of the champion. Woods is having to cover up. Woods is offering very little at this stage. He hasn't uh, popped out that jab of his for quite some time. Coming up at the halfway stage in round six. And uh, Woods being stalked now by Jones. And once again, head and body from the champion. Short and stocky and very heavily muscled. Terrific strength in the shoulders. And Woods is getting caught now. Referee Jay Nady is having a good look. All right hand to the chin. Woods is in all sorts of trouble. Well, Jones is really stepping up the gears here. Look at that for a right hand over the top. That was a terrific shot. Well, they stopped it. Jay Nady, I think, just... So one shot going in, too many, and uh, that's the earliest Roy Jones has won a contest for uh, well over three and a half years, not even the midway through round six, and it's all been called off, and Roy Jones has kept every single one of his many belts. He probably needs two or three cupboards for them all. That was a pretty impressive performance by uh, Roy Jones Jr. He's talking about moving up to light or to heavyweight, I should say. I'm not sure that's the greatest idea in the world, but the big cruiserweights, I'm sure, would not want to meet him, and the big super middleweights would love to meet him, especially Joe Calzaghe in terms of the big payday. So disappointment for uh, British fans there. Disappointment for Clinton Woods. Waited a long time to get a crack at this boxing phenomenon, Roy Jones, and when he did get a crack, well, he gave it his best shot, but his best shot simply wasn't good enough and Clinton Woods joins the list of men who have tried and failed to dethrone this, well, modern boxing legend. So Roy Jones Jr. in his 23rd world title fight makes it another victory. His 13th at light heavy and his uh, 11th successive defense. All the pressure coming from Jones in that sixth round. It was building up and building up and Woods came out and Jones simply kept at him and kept at him. And the referee had a good, good long look at the man from Sheffield. 
he was offering nothing the hands were down and Jones with serious intent that was a clubbing right hand and Woods says brave fella that he is I think the tall was about to come in and Woods had waved him forward terrific heart from Clinton Woods but Jones never let him off the hook never gave him a single seconds respite and thundered after him all the way and Jones in this sort of form was simply unstoppable and the decision was the right one what a finish by Jones disappointment for Woods but beaten by a marvel Challenger's corner, referee Jay Nady calls a halt to the bow. The winner by TKO victory and still the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world, Lord Jones Jr. Congratulations, that was some performance. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty good performance. I thank God for blessing me with you know, the ability, the talent, the people around me to go out and do the things that I do. Uh, I thank Clinton Woods for coming over and giving a gallant effort. Uh, he was just as I thought he would be. He would come out and give it his all. I told people that you know, the guy is a guy who will come out and try hard. He's not a quitter. He's no way um, should be ashamed of himself because he gave out and he gave his best effort. It was an astonishing performance by you. You, you. you clearly enjoyed it as you started to do the bit of showboating. Yeah, because you know, I knew Clinton was going to showboat and play with me too, but yeah. I just wanted to get a, get a crowd a good, uh, a good night of entertainment because that's what they paid for, and then I'm out. Clinton, um, a brave performance. Thanks for seeing us so soon afterwards. It's literally uh, minutes over. What was your verdict? Well, I felt, I felt great going into the fight. I didn't seem to have any nerves. Uh, I felt relaxed. I felt as though I could do it. After the first round, I thought, well, I'm going to give you a chance because I felt as though the first two rounds, I thought as though uh, I was getting me on, standing me on ground. And then he just, he seems to read you a bit and he kept reading my jab and teeing off off my jab. And uh, he just took over the fight. He's so quick, isn't he? Yeah, he's quick. He's, he's, he sticks back and waits for you to, um, sits, waits for you to make mistakes and then he just fires back in. He's, he's an intelligent fighter, very intelligent. What did you make of the, the showboating he was doing at times? Is, is it necessary to do all of that? I, I suppose he was enjoying it, and some would say, well, who can blame him? What did you think as the opponent? Uh, well, the crowd enjoy it, so I think that's where, if he's the crowd cheering, he's going to keep doing it. Uh, it's just part of boxing these days, I think. do not really bother me. I did a few alley shuffles myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to yeah. say, you, you seem to enjoy the whole experience. There was, there was all that nonsense before he got into the ring. Um, but you, would, you, you overall, would you have enjoyed the occasion? I did. I just said um, I really enjoyed the fight. I enjoyed everything about it. I enjoyed it. In the changing room, I felt so relaxed. I, I kept thinking, saying, God, it just feels like the, the Crawford Ashland fight. Because that was the same. I felt so relaxed. And then uh, in the evening when I got into the ring, I was so relaxed. I just felt as though it was going to be, be my night. But nope. I'm going to start again. Natalia, your girlfriend, was sitting um, ringside. Now, I, I saw you just before, and you said you weren't going to watch anything at all. H how do you think he did? Did you, did you actually watch, watch any of it? it? No. I, I didn't watch at all, no. So I, I could just hear the crowd cheering here and there, but I've not watched it. So um, I'll watch it one day. Yeah. Well, it, well he did well. Let's um, canvas the view of uh, other members of the camp. Um, Dennis Hobson, the, the manager, is here. Um, Dennis, w what did you feel? Well, as the fight went on, I mean, the first two or three rounds, I thought, yeah, Clinton's starting to uh, box at his pace. He's going to get close to him, and we were thinking like he's going to the pace. He won't, he won't enjoy the pace. But uh, you know, he started to like step up another gear. The thing what's happened in the past is that the kids what survived with Roy Jones, what they've done is run. Clinton's not a runner. He makes a fight of it. It makes him, it made him fight. Mm. He caught him some good shots inside. The, uh, Roy Jones was starting to swell up a little bit, but he just went into another gear. He caught him with a heavy uh, body shot. I think he took the wind out of Clinton a little bit. He needs to get his jab off uh, a little bit better and, and not weigh. But, you know, I mean, he's phenomenal, the fella. He's, he's a different class. And, uh, you know, he showed it tonight. Yeah. Ian Alcock, uh, what were you uh, thinking in the corner towards the end? Because uh, am I right in thinking the towel came in sort of literally as the referee was about to halt it? We stopped it. We stopped we it. Stopped we stopped it with a joint yeah, decision by, a vote, that, by yeah, us all. All three, all three of us. Yeah. And that's what we are. We're a team. And yeah. we always will be. Your verdict on Jones? Um, he's a class act, you know, I didn't realise he was that good close up, but obviously, you know, it's different seeing him live to seeing him on TV. Um, he just, I th someone just said that uh, the, last, uh, the last round when he was stopped, he threw 26 punches, 21 connected. 
you know, so what does that tell you at world level? You know what I mean? Against the world's number one, Clinton Woods. Um, what would you like to go on to, to do now? You spoke to me about uh, maybe stepping up to heavyweight. Now, I'm not quite sure whether I can believe that. What, what are your immediate plans? <laughs> Why you can't believe it? Uh, I, I just Did wondered I whether... It? You said that to me. Okay, if I said it, then you can believe it, all right? All right. If I said it, it's a possibility. Believe it. Anything I say is always a possibility. All right. Your, your immediate plans, though, what would they be? Well, we're going to go to the drawing board, look at this movie situation, and see does it make sense, does it make dollars, does it, is it the best thing for Roy Jones Jr.? Uh, if it's the best thing for Roy Jones Jr., me and my team uh, can see that that's the best thing, and I think that that's what God wants me to do, then I'll do it. If not, then it's on to either Antonio Torva or Joe Calzaghe. Yeah. Joe Calzaghe, you'd like him? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What, what chance that that could be your next one? Uh, that's a big chance. The right offer, and I'll come to England and do that. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you raise him? Uh, he's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. I don't, I don't underrate no fighters, man. I don't see, I don't go around like some people do and talk about people uh, because I think any guy that has the heart to come in the ring definitely has to be something. And for Joe to have as many defenses as he has, he's beaten some pretty good fighters. So he has to be something. So uh, that's not my thing to rate him as a fighter. My thing is to, if I get in the ring with him, to beat him as a fighter. Yeah, well, I'm sure British boxing fans will have enjoyed your performance. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, British boxing fans, for staying in tune with Roy Jones Jr. And uh, sadly, we weren't able to watch it in this country um, as the fight actually taking place here because one of Roy Jones Jr.'s demands for actually the fight being staged here as opposed to in America was he wanted to be able to sing his song on top of the pops, which apparently we didn't sort of go along with that. Uh, but, John, talk about awesome performance. I mean, he was, he was almost toying with Woods in the last two or three rounds, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He's so fast. The speed of handling is amazing. I thought Clinton Woods was tremendous what he'd done. He stood up. He tried to tee off and get the jab going but he couldn't because it was just a different speed the guy in front of him was just so fast and he was moving fainting all the time and uh, just uh... every every picture tells a story and at the end of the fight there's Clinton Woods almost spark out on the sofa and Roy Woods looked at almost as though he could go and do it again yeah it did it was a bit of a sparring session for him early on it was uh, and then he went he stepped up a year as well but he was so fast and, uh, and then he went went on the ropes and unlike the sort of alley rope with dope well covered up lets him beat himself out of it, uh, Clinton, and then comes up and explodes, takes over the fight. Speed of hand, amazing. One of the things that amazed me, Richie, watching that there was there are occasions when you're actually not sure which fist he's going to throw. So if you're facing somebody like that, that must disorientate you completely. Oh, definitely. He, he, as well as that, he has his hands pretty low. So they're, they're literally out of the, the line of vision. You're looking at him there, and his hands are down here. And then he whips these hooks in uh, out of the line of vision and with so much speed and accuracy i think uh, as, uh, as they've said last the last round was 21 uh, punches delivered from 26. so so accurate and every one isn't a soft punch it's a real hard shot you know i feel for clinton woods he, he he's met roy jones ton tonight and roy jones has been at the top of his game mm. You've picked out several instances during the course of the fight, mm. which shows why he is, as many, many say, the best pound for pound punch. Yeah, very, very quick. There, there's a lovely little feint there with his shoulder, and then he follows in with the right hand. Excellent feint with that left shoulder, and follows up with the right hand. His single shots were excellent. The hooks off the guard was excellent. That's another shot. There, he's throwing shots here. There's a lovely little uppercut as he's turning and moving away from Woods. He really has got it all, fighting on the inside, on the outside. Excellent. There he just throws a jab, and then Clinton thinks another jab's coming, and then he whips the left hook around the guard again. Really is exceptional talent. Excellent. He's talking, is he talking about moving up to heavyweight, or is this just a bravado? Well, he's, you don't know what to, I don't, I personally don't think he's big enough for heavyweight. You know, the guy's only five foot eleven. Um, I think... Well, Tyson's it, not big. I, I know, but he hasn't got the frame. Surely hasn't got the frame. I think he could probably go up to cruiserweight, and he'd be a light cruiser if he went to cruiser. But heavyweight, I... I, I just don't understand how he could put the weight on, you know, and do the training and keep keep that heavy. I suppose what he'd say, though, John, is that he'd, say he'd look at what may be a void in the market when Lennox, if Lennox calls it quits at some point yeah. in the next sort of year, 18 months, and says, well, hang on a moment, there's not too many there that I wouldn't fancy my chances against. And, I mean, that, if he were to step up one, you know, a couple of rungs and, shall we say, win a world title, that would put him on a plane when no one had any, been anywhere near it before. Well, I think he's certainly got uh, the ability to win a version of the world title. There's so many of them now. You can win a version of them. But uh, I think the, bit, the, the guys are not only going to be big, mm. it's the power. You won't be able to give that power away. It'll be just so big for them, these heavyweights, who can punch, can take a punch. And uh, like I say, you could take a version of the title. But, um... well, we, we always talk about the speed of hands, but the speed of his feet 
is remarkable as well. Isn't that, 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 it's, it's, he's just so quick around the ring. Yeah, he moves in and out of positions, doesn't he? And uh, He's so controlled. That's what impresses me so much about Roy Jones. You can literally count on your hand how many times he gets caught in a fight. He, I mean, the art of boxing is to hit and not get hit yourself. And he's the perfect example of that, he really is. I think the problem with him now, he's looking for a, for a bigger challenge. Yeah. Mikkel, the Mikkel Chesky, uh, the German the WBO champion. And you've got a situation of Mikkel Chesky won't go to America and Jones won't go to Germany. So I think Mikkel Chesky would test him. But he's obviously talking now about Joe Kalzaki. I think Joe, Kals Joe Kalzaki would test him as well mm. at super middle. Not at light heavy, I think Joe has got to stick at super middle. What about Clinton Woods? How much will a fight like that take out of him for the future? Or did he just come back and put it down to experience? I think he'll come back. He's such a tough guy and a uh, fit lad. And uh, I thought he boxed a great fight. You know, he, he tried to uh, look. He looked as if he wasn't making the most of what he had there. His height, he came down a bit tall, uh, shorter, and he wasn't using his jab. But uh, it's very difficult. To, you can only do what you, what's in front of you at the time. And this is a great fight in front of him. I thought he'd done tremendous. And, well, he went six rounds, haven't he? Which uh, you know, Roy Jones in advance had said, you know, you won't get beyond the first. So. I got, got caught with some tremendous shots that would have knocked good fighters over.